Welcome back to the Traveling Foodies. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and share our video so everyone can see what the Traveling Foodies do. Here we are back in the fabulous city of Las Vegas at the property that is now known as Hilton Grand Vacations Club Alara. When the property originally opened in 2009, it was known as Planet Hollywood Towers Westgate. In 2011, the property was sold and Hilton Grand Vacations was appointed to rebrand the tower as the Hilton Grand Vacations Company. In 2012, the property was sold yet again and was renamed Elara, a Hilton Grand Vacations Club. By 2017, the resort was known as Alara by Hilton Grand Vacations. Now that we know some history about the resort, let's take a look at what the resort looks like and which amenities are included. The Alara by Hilton Grand Vacations is located at 80 Harmon Road. It's advertised as being on the strip, but to access the hotel by foot, you have to go through the Planet Hollywood Miracle Mile shops. When you enter the main lobby through the Miracle Mile, to the right is a Starbucks. Continuing through the lobby, you will see creative sculptures of realistic hearts and a modern chic bar. As you proceed, you'll notice that there are no slot machines or gaming tables. This is because the Alara is a non-gaming resort, mainly because the property is a timeshare tower. The Alara has 1,200 units, 200 of which are reserved for timeshare owners, and the remaining 1,000 can be booked as a normal hotel. Speaking of timeshare, the reason we booked this property is because we got an amazing deal on a two-night stay. The only catch is that we had to agree to sit through a two-hour timeshare presentation. If you stick around towards the end of the video, we'll give you our thoughts on the presentation. When you arrive at the Alara by a car, there is valet and a self-parking option. We opted for the valet, which by the way, is $30 a night and self-parking is $20 a night. Once you leave your car with valet, you go through the automatic doors and up the escalator to the main lobby. Here's the front desk. Depending on if you're an owner or just a regular hotel renter, there are two separate lines for checking in. Once checked in, in order to access your room, you have to touch your key card to this reader. The attendant ensures that the card is valid. Depending on which tower your room is in, you will take the corresponding elevator. Our room was set on the 15th floor, so we had to take the further set of elevators. We checked into room 1525, which is a one bedroom suite. As soon as you open the door, you enter a huge kitchen, dining room, living room area. To the left is a kitchen and dining room table for four. In the kitchen is a full size fridge, freezer, sink, toaster, coffee pot, microwave, and electric stove top. Moving on to the living room area, there was a huge sectional couch. And as you can see, I got good and comfy on that thing. One thing that really stood out about this room is that it came equipped with a projector and a big screen. With the push of a button, the projector screen dropped down and bam, movie night. This kind of added a romantic touch to our stay. And now on to the bedroom. There is a king size bed and to the right of the bed is a jacuzzi tub. On the other side of the bed is a lounge chair and a footrest. The bedroom also has floor to ceiling windows with shades that go up and down with the push of a button. Out our window, we can see Planet Hollywood, Paris, Bellagio, and Caesars Palace. The bathroom has a standard his and hers sink with vanity lights, an enclosed toilet, and spacious shower. Two things that stood out in the bathroom, this small TV on the wall, and this two-on-one washer and dryer combo unit. That's right, you can wash and dry your clothes right in the room. Now on to amenities. On the fourth floor, there's a fitness center equipped with treadmills, ellipticals, free weights, machines, and workout bikes. There is also a business center with computers with internet access and printing capabilities. Also, there is a laundry room with free washer and dryer for guests. And lastly, here's a shot of the pool. It wasn't open during our stay, probably because we went in early February and it wasn't ideal weather for swimming. Now, how much did all of this cost, you're wondering? Well, believe it or not, we were able to get a two night stay at the Alara for $1.99 plus tax. The grand total ended up being about $2.25. On top of that, we did not have to pay resort fees. But as I mentioned earlier, there is a catch. During a stay at another Hilton property last year, we were approached by a salesperson asking us, how would you like a three day, two night stay in Vegas, no resort fees for 199 and 50,000 Hilton honors points. Soon as the man said Vegas for two nights for 199, Casey was suckered in. 
as usual. In order to get this sweet deal, we had to pay up front and agree to sit through a two hour timeshare sales presentation. At first, we thought it was a scam, but ultimately we booked it. We figured if it was a scam, we could just dispute the charge with the bank. Fast forward to now, luckily we were able to schedule our timeshare presentation in coordination with Casey's birthday weekend. For our presentation, we had to go to another Hilton Grand Vacations property. It was on the north end of the strip, named Hilton Grand Vacations on the strip. We were instructed to go to the preview center to register. The registration process was us checking in on a tablet and answering questions about our travel and vacation behaviors. This was our tour guide, Sean. He was cool. First, we sat through a 20 minute morale boosting motivational presentation. I guess to get us excited about wanting to purchase a timeshare. Then we sat down with Sean to discuss pricing and numbers. For the package he was trying to sell us, these are the numbers. $140,000 for a timeshare. After about another 45 minutes of Sean trying to finagle us into a deal, we respectfully declined. By that point, we had reached a two hour mark that we originally promised to give. We respectfully left the presentation and collected our 50,000 Hilton Honors points. Overall, I would say the presentation was okay. And I only say okay because I feel like they try to pressure you into getting a timeshare property when you don't necessarily need it or you might not want it, but they'll keep on trying to egg you on and egg you on until you make a decision. And then at that point, you just have to throw up your hand to just say, I don't need it. If that's the route you're gonna go. Ultimately, it is worth it if you're trying to get that cheap deal. The room that we had for two nights would have been like 700 plus dollars. We ended up getting it for 225, which is a steal. So I would definitely do another timeshare presentation just to get that deal. It's worth it. My final thoughts on the Alara is that it is a modern chic style resort. Some pros are it's quiet because there is no gambling or gaming. It's perfect for families because it is a home away from home. Some cons about the resort is that there are no restaurants in the hotel itself. However, if you walk into the adjoining Miracle Mile shops, there are plenty of food options to choose from. All in all, I give this property a four out of five. Have you stayed at the Alara? Have you done a timeshare presentation or plan to in the near future? Let us know in the comments. And as always, if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and share the videos. Traveling Foodies out. Perfect.